My name is Rhonda Newman, and I'm here from Thermo Fisher Scientific. I'm a senior staff scientist with the company, and today I have the uh, honor to present to you some of our latest technologies that enable CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing and pluripotent stem cells. So first of all, I just want to highlight our Thermo Fisher Scientific stem cell workflow and highlight that we have a range of tools across the PSC workflow, going from somatic cells down to the induced pluripotent stem cells, being able to culture them, characterize them, also engineer, um, then take them into their downstream differentiation and subsequently measure the output from those cells. But to, in today's talk, I'm going to be specifically focusing on the engineering platform and how a number of the new technologies provided by Thermo Fisher Scientific enable the genome editing workflow. So as many of you may know, there are a number of tools that are currently available for genome editing, um, whether it be for generation of your guide RNA using our our tool um, work platform or the Precision Guide RNA Synthesis Kit, but also we offer the GeneArt Platinum Cas9 Nuclease for delivery of the guide RNA to the cell. It's also incredibly important, um, the culture media system, which is used, and today I'll be highlighting the Simplex Medium System and how it interplays with our Revita Cell Supplement and Laminin 521 substrates to enable robust gene editing um, cell survival. Also for delivery methods, there are a number of um, ways in which the cell, the content can be delivered to the cells, and one such platform is our neon transfection system, which is an electroporation based delivery system, and we also have lipid based delivery systems, and today I'll be talking to you about one of our newest additions, like effectamine stem. And subsequently, we also offer screening reagents, and one of the tools that I'll be talking about in today's talk is our GeneArt Genomic Cleavage Detection Kit. Obviously, we also have the ION S5 system, which can be used for subsequent sequencing of your clones. So the interplay between these systems will be discussed as we go throughout the presentation today. And specifically, again, I'll be highlighting the culture medium systems and the delivery methods and how they pair together. So just a little background in Cas9 gene editing. So there are target-specific guides that guide the, the nuclease to a site, specific genomic site to, to generate indels within the uh, genomic sequence. Then these can subsequently be repaired using either non-homologous in-joining. This will um, generate a frame shift or a premature stop, and this is advantageous for a generation of gene knockouts to look at gene function. Also um, is the homology directed repair is another method by which the repair can happen. And this uses a donor DNA template to repair the repair the um, indel formation. This can be used in generating a correction or also in generating reporter lines. Overall, the CRISPR-Cas9 system um, can be delivered using three different methods. So it can be delivered as a DNA vector, which then undergoes transcription and then subsequent translation, um, or it can be delivered as an mRNA guide RNA mix where you have to go through translation to your Cas9 protein, um, or alternatively, it can be delivered as the Cas9 protein with a guide RNA complex. This by far is the easiest way to deliver the content to the cells as it only requires that nuclear localization and does not require any transcription or tra translation steps. This can be accomplished using the neon electroporation device. This can be used to uh, deliver DNA, mRNA, or protein, and can also be used in co-delivery. The life effect means stem, the newest addition to our lipofectamine reagents is also versatile in this aspect, allowing for delivery of DNA, mRNA, protein, as well as, as multiple um, payloads. So one of the ways in which we screen the efficiency of delivery is using the GeneArt Genomic Cleavage Detection Kit, and here I just highlight the workflow. 
So cells are transfected with your gene art CRISPR, then you subsequently lyse the cells, and then the indel in the genomic DNA is subsequently amplified, so you'll have areas where there's indel formation, and others where the cut did not happen, there are wild types. That is then DNA uh, denatured and re-annealed, and you'll generate mismatches where there were indel formations that occurred. Then the mismatch detection is through restriction enzyme digestion, and then that subsequently allows for the formation of small fragments, and those are subsequently detected using electrophoresis to look at the cut fragment. So basically looking at densitometric analysis of the cut versus uncut gives you the relative cleavage efficiency. So this is a very rapid, easy um, kit to use, and has a about a five-hour processing time, and it's also a quantitative way to assess how well your cleavage efficiency took place. So as I mentioned, the Cas9 protein delivery is the most efficient way in, in which to deliver the content to the cell, as it does not require to go through transcription or translation. It also provides for titratable indel formation. Here we just showed, again, that genomic cleavage detection kit assay, and you can see um, no, no payload delivered or DNA, mRNA, and then increasing protein amounts. And you can see that it has a titratable effect where we're able to achieve up to 89% cleavage efficiency. Another important feature of just using the Cas9 uh, nucleus RNP complex is that it also has a shorter persistence. So the protein immediately shows up within the cell, but then within 48 hours, much of the, much of the protein is gone. This is important as persistence of the protein can result in off-target cleavage effects. Another important feature of using a Cas9 RMP complex for delivery is the fact that the cell survive this survive this delivery much better than if you were to deliver uh, DNA plasmid or mRNA, as shown here. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, the cell culture medium in which um, the gene editing is performed is incredibly important. So we, we developed the Stimplex medium. So this is actually a GIBCO CGMP manufactured feeder-free medium for culture of human pluripotent stem cells. Um, it is uniquely formulated to be more robust than our essential eight medium and has fewer components than MTs or one. Um, specifically looking at the gene editing workflow, it provides a number of improvements. So whether it be for cell survival post-edit, uh, maintenance of normal PSC properties post-edit, or improved clonal cell survival. And I'll be covering data that supports this. This medium can also be used for routine culture of your pluripotent stem cells and shows compatibility across the PSC workflow with existing workflow reagents. So today I'll be talking about how it pairs nicely with our lipofactamine stem transfection reagent and our neon electroporation device. So first I want to start out by looking at the lipofactamine stem reagent. As I mentioned, it can be used to deliver a, a wide range of payload, whether it be DNA, DNA mRNA, or the Cas9 uh, protein. So here I focused on looking at the Cas9 nucleus HPRT guide RNA complex to the cells um, that had been cultured in simplex medium. To do so, the following workflow was used. Proliferating cultures in simplex medium were singularized and seeded at 50,000 cells per, per well to achieve approximately a 30 to 60% confluency on the day of transfection. So these were allowed to recover for 24 hours, and then subsequently the medium was aspirated from the culture surface, and Optimum 1 was, was added in place. The Cas9 RMP complex is then delivered to the cells, and then the cells are incubated for one to four hours ahead of a stemflex overlay. Then following 24 hours post-transfection, the at the transfection complexes are removed, and then subsequently 48 to 72 hours post-transfection, you can analyze the editing efficiency. 
So here is just some representative data. So here um, in this leftmost panel, what we looked at is the time course ahead of simplex medium overlay. In this particular experiment, we spiked in a GFP mRNA as a tracker to look at the transfection efficiency. And what you can see is that over one to up to four hours, we see an increase in the percent GFP positive confluency. So using that four hour time point, um, it seems to be optimal for this system ahead of overlay. The other thing that's important to consider when transfecting your complex is that you should use single cell passage PSCs. If you use clump cell passage PSCs, what you can see is that only the outside periphery of the cells will be transfected, whereas single cell passage PSCs get nice homogeneous transfection across the culture surface. Using these uh, four-hour time point as well as single cell passaging, we're able to achieve up to 50% of indel formation in simplex cultured cells using the lipofectamine stem. So this provides an efficient lipid-based delivery option. The cells also mean very nice uh, pluripotency. Here we just show OS4 expression and show that Throughout the culture surface, you can see a very nice expression of OPT4. So uh, as I mentioned, lipofectamine stem can also be used to, to deliver a number of alternative payloads. So while I just showed you results showing the Cas9 RMP complex delivery to stemplex cultured cells, we've also shown that mRNA can be delivered efficiently to the stemplex cultured PSCs and also we've shown that there's efficient delivery of large DNA plasmids up to about 11.2 kb to simplex cultured PSCs. So it does offer versatility in the payload and a, a scalable method. So there are additional resources available for this. The, we have our GIPCO epizomal HIPSC line that was used in these experiments that I just presented here. And we'll also have the protocol coming soon at uh, www.thermofisher.com simplex lipofectamine stem. And so um, the recommended system again for this is the simplex medium with revitacel supplement. And here we use the Geltrex matrix. Um, we also used our non tissue culture treated plates and we incorporated that with the lipofectamine stem. So now I want to take you through some um, data that we show with delivery of the Cas9 RMP complex with, a, with HPRT guide RNA using their neon transfection system. In this particular workflow, we have our proliferating simplex culture. It goes through singularization, and then we have electroporation-based um, delivery of the Cas9 RMP to the cells. The cells are subsequently expanded and recovered. And then 48 to 72 hours post-recovery, we do take a, a small amount to look at the cleavage efficiency. These cells can subsequently then be uh, sorted using fluorescence-activated cell sorting using a TRA 1 to 60 positive for pluripotent and propidium iodide negative for live cells. These are subsequently seeded at one, three, or five cells per well of a 96 well plate and then are fed every other or every three days. Obviously, then these clones that expand are able to be sequenced. So here I'm just going to take you through some of our representative um, recovery from our GIPCO human epizomal IPSC line uh, following electroporation according to the protocol noted here. So the, what we see in the absence of revitacel, so in the absence of any rock inhibitor in delivery, what we see is that for the Stimplex medium system, we see optimal recovery in that system over the two others tested here. In the presence of revitacel supplement, again, we do not see an improvement in the performance of Stimplex medium at this cell feeding density, um, but we do see an improvement in our essential eight flux. So Stimplex medium really provides optimal recovery post that electroporation event. 
taking these cells and then running them for the percentage cleavage efficiency using the condition 7 and 14 on the neon electroporation device we've seen to be optimal for the Cas9 RMP complex delivery to these cells. And you can see that we get very high cleavage efficiency around 75%. The cells then maintain normal pluripotency as assessed using OCT4 and TRAB1 to 60 qualitative at staining. And we've also looked using flow cytometry at the percent nanog positive cells, and we see that they're above 90% positive. So simplex medium does support the maintenance of pluripotency in this workflow. Subsequently, looking at clonal expansion in which cells are, are fluorescence activated, cell sorted, and then seeded at one, three, or five cells per well. Um, we used, again, our GIBCO abosomal IPSC line and according to the, the recommendations provided in the protocol shown here. And looking at the stimflux medium compared to the other media systems, we see that it provides the most robust recovery from single cells um, in the absence of ROC inhibitor, and this data was generated using our laminin 521 matrix. When we include revitacell in that sort and we leave it on for the first three days post that singularization and we only see the cultures every three days, what we see is that there is a boost in the cell survival and we see that Simplex outperforms the other system. So there are additional resources available for this. As I mentioned, the, the results that I've shown here were conducted using our GIBCO epizomal IPSC line, which is commercially available. Um, we also have the protocol available at www.thermofisher.com Simplex Electro. Um, there is also an applications webinar which covers how the Simplex system is used in gene editing. Um, presented by Dr. Elise Munzi at CCRM, and that's available on our 24 Hours On Demand site. So overall, the recommended system for this is our Stimplex Medium with Revitasol Supplement and the Laminin 521 Matrix, again with our non tissue culture treated plates and using our neon electroporation system. So now I just want to leave you with some of our researcher responses to their testing of this medium system across their cell lines. The first is, um, and there are video testimonials available at www.thermofisher.com Stemplex. Uh, Bjorn Brandel um, tested this medium system and he found that he had um, a much better time in getting his single cells to survive every step of the genome editing process. And so this really allowed him to focus on more important things in his research. And Lee Smianzi um, at CCRM uh, showed very nicely in her webinar that the gene editing really um, was benefited by the simplex medium allowing for increased cell survival, proliferation, and viability. And she also found that it was no longer up to luck and she actually knew that they were going to survive. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge all of the alpha and beta testers that we've had for this medium formulation and for our lipofectamine stem, and also thank internal colleagues listed here. And thank you for listening to this 24 Hours On Demand presentation. <laughs>